they're basically just two types of digital marketing. Digital marketing that's designed to generate quick profit and digital marketing that's designed to generate long-term growth. We're gonna start by talking about how to generate quick profit. Now, the key to success with generating a quick profit is looking at your entire target audience and looking at a tiny subset within that, which is the group of people that are in market, the people that are actively looking to buy something. So the key to success is to focus on that very tiny fraction. One of the easiest ways to do that is with YouTube advertising. In YouTube advertising, you can choose in-market audiences. You can see on the left here, for example, that I'm targeting people that are in market for custom sports apparel. But YouTube also gives you the ability to target all different types of in-market audiences. So for example, people that are interested in beauty products and services, people that are in market for dating services, people that are in market for real estate. Now, that's just an example of how you can do this with YouTube, but it's also very easy on other platforms. I'm gonna talk briefly about some of those key examples, and then later in the course, we'll go into some detailed tutorials. But before we do that, let's talk briefly about who I am. My name is Decker Fraser. I used to be a global marketing manager for Sony PlayStation. I was a vice president of marketing for Google Accelerator Startup. I have half a million enrollments on udemy.com. I also taught college level digital marketing. And I have my MBA from Philip Kotler's Kellogg School of Management, the top marketing school in the United States. Now moving on, another easy way to target in-market audiences is using Google search ads. So you can see here, for example, I typed into Google YouTube microphone and we see some examples of ads here. Now, the reason this is successful is because somebody searching for YouTube microphone is probably in market. They're looking to buy something and because it's not overly expensive, they're probably gonna buy it fairly soon. A good way to come up with keywords is to use Google Keyword Planner. And you can see here, I have some examples. We can see that YouTube microphone in the United States generates searches of around 1,000 to 10,000 per month. We can see that the competition to pay for those ads is fairly competitive, it's high. We can see what the bidding prices are. And we can also see some other keywords that we might want to bid for in advertising. For example, Mike for YouTube. Now, another related thing you can do here is called search engine optimization, SEO. The reason I have this as sometimes is because SEO can take a long time to get results. It might take upwards of a year. So it's not always the best at generating a quick profit. And it's also only effective to generate a quick profit when you're focusing on keywords for people that have buying intent. So for example, if they type in something like buy shirt now, then they probably have buying intent. But if it's a more generic keyword, it's not likely gonna generate a quick profit for you. Facebook ads is another very effective way to capture in-market audiences, but it's a little more complicated. And there are basically three different ways that we can target in-market audiences using Facebook ads. The first is with retargeting. So for example, if I broadcasted a video to a million people using an awareness objective, I could isolate the people that watched at least 10 seconds of that video or of any video that I had. And I could say, well, those people have probably some level of interest in what I'm selling. So I'm gonna focus on them using retargeting ads. I can also retarget people that visit my website. I can also retarget people that I generated traffic from using the YouTube in-market targeting and the Google in-market keywords. Now, the second way I can target with Facebook ads is using an imported list. So for example, I might have an internal list for my CRM of people that engage with my sales team through live chat. Well, I can import those people into Facebook and target them specifically. I can also go and buy a list. So I can ask somebody for intent data, people that have buying intent and import those people into the Facebook platform. I can also just target people by buying a list of people who recently moved and say, okay, well, they might be interested in furniture, home insurance, etc. Now, the third and perhaps the easiest way to do in-market targeting with Facebook is with trigger targeting. So Facebook actually enables you to target people based on key things that happened in their life recently. So for example, people who recently got a new job, they're in a new relationship, they have a new smartphone and tablet, et cetera. And you can see some examples here uh, where I'm using that detailed targeting in Facebook. Quora ads is another very effective way. Now the reach on Quora is not gonna be as great on Facebook, but it's gonna be very good at isolating people based on what topics that they're navigating through, what keywords they've been searching for, and what questions they're asking. So we can display ads in these specific categories. Later in the course, I'm gonna talk about these other examples that perhaps a little less relevant in terms of generating a quick profit, but very good in terms of generating long-term growth. Spotify ads, 
has this really cool ability to do real-time context advertising. So for example, people that are at dinner, people that are gaming, people that are cooking. So you can see that when somebody's cooking, they may be very receptive to buying something related to cooking, like a cookbook or perhaps a cooking appliance. When they're trying to relax or they're trying to do some gaming, they might be particularly receptive to buying something related to gaming. So that kind of contextual advertising, very good for generating quick term profit. Amazon ads is a great place to advertise because that is where people are going to shop and perhaps there's nothing more in market than that you can do that easily using keyword targeting so i've done this for example to promote my kindle books and uh, amazon is a huge opportunity especially if you're selling a product that people uh, can buy very soon very quickly without a very extensive lead nurturing process now i want to make a comment here that most of the platforms now or at least of a lot of them are going to have the ability to use an imported list so if you have a list of people that you think are in market because of intent data, because of behavior that they've had engaged with your company. You can import that into LinkedIn. You can import it into Twitter. You can see some examples here. You can import an audience into Reddit ads. You can import it into Snapchat ads here. And uh, you can also do it with TikTok. So there is a very strong propensity to target these people with different platforms. One of the key things to keep in mind, however, is that Facebook and Google and, and YouTube as well are going to have the broadest reach. So uh, you're highly likely to get a high match rate uh, with those, whereas these might be a little too tiny to operate within. The other thing to keep in mind is that retargeting is available through most platforms. So for example, with LinkedIn here, I'm a big fan of the retargeting options because I can simply retarget anybody that had any interaction with an image ad, which is very, very simple. You can't actually do that with Facebook. With Facebook, the retargeting would have to be people who visited your website, who opened a lead form, who watched a video, something like that. But the great thing about Facebook is the reach is much higher, so it makes it very powerful in terms of retargeting. Also, people use Facebook a lot, so it's highly likely that they're gonna see your retargeting ad. Google, in a similar fashion, has very broad reach, so it's very powerful uh, in terms of retargeting capabilities. But we can also turn to other platforms like TikTok. If you want to uh, catch trends early, we have the ability to retarget people that completely watched a video, as an example. Now, another key way to target people that are in market is using something like cold email. Cold email can be automated at scale using tool like Lemlist, which I've depicted here. Now, it's going to be very effective if the list that you're importing in the Lemlist is of people that you think are in market for what you're selling. Now, the second type of digital marketing that we're going to talk briefly about is long-term growth. And this is really where the biggest opportunity is because most people, most of your target audience is not in market, upwards of 95% of them. So that is going to be key to your long-term success, even though it may not generate an immediate profit. And the key way that we're going to drive long-term growth is with reach ads. Now, reach ads usually fall under the category of awareness, but then there's going to be a subsection in most platforms where you're able to optimize for reach instead of something else like impressions. I've depicted here how to do that with Facebook, but you can do it with LinkedIn. You can do it with almost any platform like Spotify, etc. Another key way to drive long-term growth is through partnerships. So forming partnerships with other companies, forming partnerships with influencers, forming partnerships with people that have much bigger reach than you have and leveraging them, piggybacking off them. One of the best ways I find to identify partners is to go to SparkToro, which is available with a freemium model. And you're able to type in certain keywords that define who your target audience is. And then SparkToro will spit out a list of brands, companies, pages, and people that you can align with to reach them and drive your long-term growth. Now, lastly, what I want to say here is there's a common mistake that people make with digital marketing. The first is they create content that doesn't generate a quick profit. The reason it doesn't is because it doesn't resonate with in-market buyers. So the kinds of content that will resonate with in-market buyers will be something like a top 10 list of the best website designers, something like a buyer's guide to B2B SaaS CRM software. That kind of thing quickly segues into a conversation that's going to generate sales pipeline for you. Now, the second big mistake is they create content that doesn't generate growth because it simply doesn't reach enough people. So the answer to this is to create just a few very important key content assets and distribute them widely through number one, reach advertising, and number two, partners that already have a lot of reach. Now, next in this course, we're going to know some detail of specific platforms and give you the tools you need to drive your short-term and long-term growth.